Welcome to US Digi360, I'm Ginger Chang. Today's feature is very special. It marks our 100th episode, which is quite a feat in itself. To celebrate the milestone, we're going to take you behind the scenes of what really goes on to make US Digi360. The first important step begins with a strong foundation and support. And that support I'm referring to is our dedicated team of volunteers. This program started off with the help from our volunteers. So now we all will finally get to match the faces to our volunteers around the U.S. and abroad in Taiwan. Let's go meet them. We have over 10 volunteers who work with us in this program. My name is Catherine Alupin. Hi, my name is Hui Ying. Hi, my name is Teresa Lee. Hello, my name is Gary Turnett. Uh, Guo Youming. Hi, I'm Ralph Boyer. Hi, my name is Sarah. She was able to host the very first my name is Quan Zhu Chen. I'm the producer assistant, and I'm the one who coordinates with our volunteers. When a US CG360 episode has finished editing, the post-production process can begin. The first one of these steps is translation and transcription. The typical job that I do for them are mostly transcribing videos, documentaries, and translating the clips that people, other people have transcribed from Chinese into English. Hui Ying, she's our script translator. Pre-production and production time, they already took a lot of time to do it. So when it comes up to the post-production part, I have to rush Hui Ying to do the script translation. A lot of time, I have to uh, push our volunteers. Tuan Zhu is re really very nice in arranging the workload and making sure that I have enough time. Even though I want to give them more time to do it, but I, I can't. I have received a lot of feedback on my work, so I think it's a very smooth and great learning process for me. After the script is translated, it is then sent to the script editor for revision. I have the privilege of being the script editor for 2G360. Oftentimes, the, the original footage is shot in Chinese, and so obviously it needs to be translated into English. Uh, after it's translated, it comes to me, and what I do is I change it so that it sounds like it was spoken by a native English speaker. Chuji is very well known in the Chinese community, but it's virtually unknown in the English-speaking community. Uh, and if it's to grow in the United States, we really need to uh, gain access into the English-speaking community. The very best resource we have is the, the 360 videos. Hey, Teresa, how are you doing? Um, so we have a new uh, video and need your help to do voiceover recording. I became involved in USG 360 when I was invited onto the program to be a guest speaker on the show for one of the episodes. And when I was introducing myself to the new media team because I was unfamiliar with them, the new, one of the staff members I met, Guan Ru, she introduced herself to me and when I said hi, I would never forget her face and what she said to me. She grabbed my hand and said, I love your voice, would you do voiceover for us? Try one more time. <laughs> Since my wife joined the production, that's how I got started. My involvement with USG 360 started in 2010 uh, when they decided to have an episode about Haiti. I believe I got involved through my friend Nancy. And um, she introduced me to Funtine, and they were talking about a new show that they were creating, and they needed someone to do voiceovers. And because I had been in Haiti, volunteering with the relief effort following the earthquake, the production team asked that I do the voiceover for that episode. So Nancy volunteered me, and I met Funtine, and I couldn't say no. <laughs> and I've been doing voiceovers ever since. In the beginning, I just remember it was a little bit strange because I've never done anything like this before. One time I asked the students, why do you do your In the work? beginning, the I always requested to see the videos so I can understand like the context and, and who's talking so I can kind of match the emotion and the speed. Typically, you expect voiceovers uh, to have relatively deep voices. And my voice isn't exactly high, but it's certainly not. Oh, but <laughs> it was always a mess afterwards because I'm always crying seeing how much someone did for someone else. And, you know, I had to pretend to be this person and everything. It allows me to continue my acting skills, uh, act out a little bit of different characters, 
I really enjoy from the work is that I was able to utilize my voice. I've never been able to do that. So for example, uh, right now I'm basically talking in my natural vocal slot. So if I were to see you on the street, I might even go a little bit higher and say, hey, how's it going? How's your day? Whereas if I'm doing a voiceover, it might sound something like, in January of 2010, a magnitude 7.0 earthquake hit the island of Haiti. It's really difficult to provide English voiceovers for Chinese speakers because Chinese people speak very fast and short. For some reason, you just sometimes can't concentrate, but no matter how hard you try to read out the script, you have to really rush it. Your tongue just won't follow with you, and you get tongue-tied. Some of the kids' voices are so difficult. Of ways, visual, verbal, and with action. Whenever I, I see a paragraph, I'm usually, I always see like all the Chinese words I have to pronounce, or the Chinese names, and I, I get nervous right away because I'm always scared that I'm not gonna pronounce it correctly. It's pronunciation of the name, Zhe Ji, which is incorrect to a point. Master Zheng Yan's Jing Su aphorisms in Zhe Ji. <laughs> My bedroom is far from a professional recording studio. So sometimes, if there's background noise, I have to take some extreme measures. Four months later, we went back to Broad Channel to see how the families were recovering. Although some house, like taking a bed sheet or a towel and put it over my head to try to minimize the background noise. I have an American accent. So yes, that is another challenge of mine. The voiceovers are added to the videos and the complete episodes are sent over to Taiwan. But Taiwan isn't just the location of Dai TV. There's also volunteers in Taiwan working on the show as giving help definitely isn't limited to the time zone or a certain distance. 翻译职工就是我是负责把已经写好的英文稿子翻译成中文 I came for a, a translator workshop in Ciji headquarters. At the end of the workshop, I signed up for US Ciji 360 I always love Chinese language, so doing the translation work is rewarding for me. The challenge I have is I, I found myself spending a lot of time debating which is the best word I should choose. Real plus 20. 联合国秘书长讲的话啦，那些东西都要全部翻成中文的。So I try and help her out uh, when she's doing the translation work with uh, translating the, especially the English idioms or the slang, um, things that don't translate very well into Chinese. 我就直接包给二哥。可以来帮忙做做看，就把二哥给拖下水了。为什么可以包给他呢？因为他平常就有看一些，他平常比较关心报纸新闻啦。也是一边查字典。the Chinese script is finalized and then sent to the final step in its journey. They created a nice island called <笑>就那个时段啊就是陪他玩然后就是不要去吵他因为他需要比较专心 那我觉得透过这个节目，可以让我更了解美国。我们看大家台刚好有这个三六零的，然后说，哎，这是不是你剪的这样子？And being able to see it, everything put together allows me to be more of an audience member and just see the story told, and then think, wow, you know, I was I was a part of that. You guys do a great job. You always make me cry. The content is always interesting because of what the organization does. Now I can start looking for forward to episode two hundred. Share the word, everyone should watch US 360.
really appreciate what they do and what, how much effort and time they put to help us. It's not easy being a volunteer since they have other commitments in their lives too. However, time and time again, every one of the individuals we've met before have never failed us. So you've already seen one component to making our program. The second element is where all the filmmaking magic happens. Many of you don't know that Team USG 360 is actually on the East and West Coast. So how does a small production team on both sides of the U.S. handle stories of today's nine regional offices and abroad as well? You'll find out soon. Welcome to USG 360 Snapshots. I'm Ginger Chang. Welcome to USG 360 Snapshots. I'm Neil Sokong. Today, we present the third I believe that USG 360, America. this program in itself and what it could do to show what CG volunteers are doing in the U.S., they would uh, bring more um, Americans to know the great missions of what CG is doing. I don't speak Mandarin. If, if this program didn't exist, I wouldn't know anything about Suji. Um, it introduced Suji to the U.S. people who don't know about Suji. And in the meantime, I think it's very important for um, the Taiwan audience, the Asian audience, to know what's going on in the United States. U.S. TG 360 has been bringing the stories of the North American volunteers to the world for the last few years. But did you know that our show began as a five-minute segment three years ago? We first had a, a pilot show as a sample to show Dai what this program is about. The length of the program was only five to seven minutes at that time. The pilot was met with enthusiasm from the network, so we produced these little short segments for about a year. But when it came to season two and renewal, there was a big and exciting change. One day we got the news that we got extended to 24 minutes. Oh my God, I think I walked around in days. We only had a few directors. Um, um, you know, we were just constantly short of cool. So, you know, we started looking at people, um, you know, Ting started looking around, hiring. When Ting asked me to be the host for US to G360, first I was a little, what's the word, surprised. At the beginning, she just kind of told me to make it like city style, which is why the very first season was very blue. I had a huge fear of being in front of the camera. When the new season came along, we were thinking to make it something different. I had asked her what was the difference between the U.S. city than everywhere else. And she said that um, the U.S. CG volunteers serve all different type of people, are from different parts of the world. So we thought, why not use very colorful? <laughs> Now we have more and more young, talented directors. Hello, my name is Wen Ren. I'm one of the video directors. Hi, my name is Phil Wang. I'm the director of US 2G360. I expanded my duties to more of like, you know, a writer-director area. Many other members are also added to support production. My name is Michael, and I am a camera operator. I'm a sound editor and re-recording mixer for US Suchi 360. So from the short version of uh, 360, it slowly evolved to the new 24 Minutes program. I think we cried when we were in Cali before, <laughs> when we didn't think we could make it through a second season. And now we have 100 episodes. We have a new episode every single week, and every episode is 24 minutes. But few people probably understand what that means. We have to know how to editing. We have to know how to write. Sometimes we have to be the lighting person, uh, the driver. You're looking at 24 minutes, but what's actually happening is maybe a week or two of filming. Sometimes when I go out for location filming, I'm the only crew member on site six people on the West Coast and then five people on the East Coast. It's actually quite difficult of a task to cover all the stories in North America, but that's basically what we're doing. The US TG 360 team, as a result, has filmed in many places that many of the members would never have even imagined of going. 
Working on the show has been a really amazing experience. I've been to like so many countries because of it. Uh, South Africa, feeding AIDS orphans. When I was in San Francisco, I got to see the Golden Gate Bridge. When we went to Rio, we got to see Sugarloaf Mountain. Hawaii, I've been to uh, New York. Far Rockaway, Seagate, Coney Island. There is one lady in Mexico that really surprised and shocked me. She served at a church. A lot of uh, poor people, people there only eat rotten food. So this woman, she dedicated to bring more food to this area. And what surprised me is that, that when she talks, she always laughs like, ah. You just feel really grateful for your own situation when you see the different um, in, in poverty levels and abilities. I saw the living condition of the people and after the earthquake and the kids on the streets and... For instance, in South Africa, you know, you just go 30 minutes and then you go from instant, like, luxury hotel to devastating poverty. Uh, Pick Up America. At first, when I was given the project, I was hesitant because how can you create a story for, out of people picking up trash? When we flew out to meet these young people, I was just captivated by what they were doing. I called them the USG 360 2.0 because they're so young and they might have some different ideas, but we're all doing these incredible things. And for them, it was this picking up trash across the America. Future for America.所有人不会在意你的过错其实那时候一直在想想说到底要不要有这个模拟画面现实的生活中你那个画面已经不见了他的面罩跟那个手枪都是往上往前预定好的厂牌跟样式跟当初都是一模一样氛围让他去回想那
I bring it so it's, I'm gonna have to turn it down so that you actually enjoy what you're listening to. Sometimes I get the shows, uh, literally I get an email at around 9 p.m. or so. It's usually to, to finish the show that night or that evening uh, to have it ready the next morning. But I enjoy working on it and I enjoy the fact that they are helping people in the community. Like two days ago, the grand opening of the Collège Marianne. It's not about filming them, it's about seeing like hundreds of little girls being so happy and clapping their hands and, and you see the hope for them. The only thing you want to do is edit and share what you feel. It's about sharing what you feel, sharing what you've seen because we get the chance to be here and to, and to see that, but many people don't. Many volunteers would like to see that. Many people who are not even in Suchi would like to see that, so that's our mission. So yeah, it's more about a mission than a job. Our final component gives the program its momentum. When we reached out to you, our audience and our guests, we were surprised by the overwhelming response. So I will leave you with a clip of some of that feedback, which means you will need to watch out for more in future episodes. And before I go, Team US CG360 would like to thank everyone's support. So continue to stay with us. I'm Ginger Chang, and I'll see you soon. I have been watching the first episode of this program, and it's, it really inspired me to do more good deeds. Being involved with Suchi, you get to do a lot of things that you normally don't get involved with, such as being on the show. That's probably the, because that's the first time I get filmed, so uh, the, the process, the preparation process is actually a lot more complicated. We call it transformative television. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, television that uh, allows people to um, think outside of the box. I was very impressed because it was very well done. <laughs> so I, I really didn't even know that such a small place there can, can ha you know, there's so many things that can happen in such a small place there. I thought all the staff were very professional, kind of serious, but very comforting. In a way, I'm kind of happy because I don't want for 360. <laughs> I have like around 40 to 50 uh, kids. They say, oh, Ginger is so cute. I'm Ginger Chang. And, uh, Our feature today focuses on bilingual said, education in America. And this program is a lifesaver uh, for teachers like us. Foundation! Rocks! Thank you. It was really fun and they were all really nice. So this is the very beginning. This is the very first day. This year. We've come I am a long so, way. so, we so grateful of having gotten to meet Wen and the rest of the Suchi 360 team. And I am considering becoming a, a long-term volunteer with Suchi. Putting so much love and energy and heart into uh, producing, directing, and editing, and filming all of these uh, wonderful projects around the world. With peace and blessings to your path, I extend my gratitude. Um, I love 360 because um, I remember this part where Hurricane Katrina and the musicians on the street, they had to go through all those hardships, but they still um, made it alive. It's just that you have to enjoy this 360 show. And we hope that our 360 show is now 93, and we can do 1,000 or 1,000. Hi, my name is Tim Fa. I'm the producer of USG360. The main mission of the show is to spread the sea of love and implement CG spirit in the United States. 100 episodes is just the beginning. We will bring you more touching stories. Stay tuned with us. Thank you for your great support.